Hello, and thank you for joining us today for, for a devotional time. Uh, today, I'm going to take a cue from our brother Paul and invite us to dig into Psalm 119 from among our Bible readings today. And you know, I have to admit, this is not one of those Psalms that I've spent a lot of time in. It's long, for one thing, so it's not the sort of thing you just go to for casual devotional reading. But there's a, thaw, uh, a theme in here that I want to invite us to listen for and want to talk about a little bit later in our devotional. And I want to invite us to listen for all the different ways the psalmist talks about God's words and God's laws. Here we go. Psalm 119, verses 41 through 48. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. And then I shall have an answer for those who taunt me, for I trust in your word. Do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your ordinances. I will keep your law continually, forever and ever. I shall walk at liberty, for I have sought your precepts. And I will also speak of your decrees before kings, and, not, and shall not be put to shame. I find my delight in your commandments, because I love them. I revere your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. You know, we don't often think of the law that way. At least I suspect that at best, many of us think of God's laws as the sort of thing that we're supposed to do to avoid getting in trouble or at least to kind of make things go smoothly or the stuff that we do to stay on God's good side. And the weird thing is, I think that kind of obedience, while good intentioned, actually kind of misses the point. It's to know the law, but not the one who gives the law. You know, if, if we're afraid of what happens, if we don't, don't do things exactly right, uh, we may be taking it seriously, and that's, you know, that's a good thing, but we may be actually missing out on not just the point of the law, but not understanding the one who gives the law and why. Uh, like how John talks about in his letter about the one who fears has not yet been made perfect in love. Obedience that's based on the or elseness uh, of the law or a fixation on legalism is to miss the point of it. Sometimes we're tempted uh, as Christians to make cartoon villains out of the Pharisees and the New Testament and the teachers of the law, folks who are taking the Hebrew Bible seriously and trying to live it out. And it, we, we see Jesus' opposition to them and the arguments that they get into, and we tend to collapse it into this sense of the Pharisees and the law must be bad, and Jesus and grace are good, which, you know, they are. Um, but the problem is when we make that as simplistic reduction of the problem, as if one is just opposed to the other, because Jesus himself said he didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. There's something else that's going on here. And, you know, that's what strikes me as I read this passage for today. The, the love that's expressed for God's word over and over, um, you know, all the different ways that the psalmist talks about what God has to say and just how important that is. Uh, in fact, here's the words that I came up with as I was reading through and listening for this. Promise, word, word of truth ordinances, law, precepts, decrees, commandments, statutes. You think that this guy had a Hebrew, th in it, or woman, had, this, had a Hebrew thesaurus sitting next to them as they were trying to write out the psalm. There's something more going on here. And it's not like a, a student just trying to, you know, get on the good side of their teacher by, you know, being the best student or whatever that is, just for the sake of, um, you know, trying to ingratiate them um, to the teacher, you know, there's something else that's happening here, uh, as well as there's something deeper going on than someone that's, and we unfortunately probably all know people like this too, who are so legalistic that uh, they just delight in the rules for the rules sake, or the rules and how they manipulate people, or, you know, how it's, it becomes kind of a power game. Instead, there's a whole attitude here, a different attitude uh, toward what God has to say and what God is saying to us that isn't about that. Uh, it's about something deep, that God's commands tell us something about God's character. God's promises tell us something about God's loving care towards us and not just to us, but to 
the world and the creation we live in, the neighbors that uh, are right next to us, or the neighbors that uh, we are tempted to label or to distance ourselves from. Um, and that speaks to our world today. In the midst of a world that seems to be going crazy, and yes, religious people and Christians uh, use and have for a long time uh, some folks fall into this trap of using the law as a, as a, a club to, to try to force people into doing things their way. Despite all of that, despite how badly we sometimes misuse God's word, at the heart of it is still a message from God that is life for those who love it, that reflecting on God's law and, you know, we know that beautiful summary of it that Jesus shared with his disciples that said, all the law and the prophets hang on this command to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So to keep that as the core and then to reflect on the rest of God's law, the rest of scripture in light of that, what does it mean for us to look for that, to see what is God like? What's this really all about? What is this saying about what it means to live in this world? And if we did live in that way, uh, in light of and reading scripture and understanding it in light of God's love that is shown to us in Jesus, isn't that good news for the world? Isn't that good news for us? A freedom, in fact, that the psalmist talks about that, you know, as they, as they look to and live into God's calling and commands, there's actually a freedom there. There's a freedom to truly be who we were created for. And sometimes we think we get twisted around that freedom is, is just the ability to do whatever I want with nobody telling me what to do. And in fact, the result of that, unfortunately, we see is a lot of chaos and selfishness and, and brokenness. Um, and in the midst of that, God's word speaks and calls us to something else. It's something that's deeply needed in the world today. Uh, for those whose hope is in God's character, uh, God's loving kindness, God's faithfulness, uh, the Hebrew word chesed, which I didn't speak perfectly there, but is a key word in the Old Testament that talks not only about God's character, that God is loving and faithful and kind, but also of God's commitment to that, a commitment that's expressed in action, over and over and over again. And we see it throughout scripture that even when we mess up, God is faithful. And so our pursuit of the law of living into God's command isn't to make God love us. It's not to earn God's love. Rather, it's a reflection of God's character. It's, it's a way of aligning our lives with God's life, of, of valuing the things that God values. How wonderful it is that at the core of that, Jesus says, the heart of that is love, love that's directed Godward and directed out to others, and a love that also includes ourselves. Sometimes we forget that. I want to close with uh, these last words of um, in one of the lectionary readings for today in James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, where James says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works. Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what's the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. And James is talking about the outworking of God's law, God's command onto our lives that is good news for others, that's good news for us. How might we reflect on that today? How might we live that out? May God bless you on the journey. Grace and peace.